That's all right. Get him next time. Edgar was accepted at Northwestern University. grandfather, Dr. Bo, looked after him and eventually freighted his education, at least a year of it, at Northwestern University. And I think my grandparents uh, said, you know, we want to see you get a college education in the same way that they wanted to see the same thing happen for my mom, my mother. You know, he was like a son. They didn't have one. They had two daughters and he was the surrogate son. Edgar uh, soon became something of a campus entertainer I believe that Edgar, you know, got so popular on campus and, you know, news traveled the way it does, and he got some opportunities to fill in at uh, theaters in the greater Chicago area. Way back then, and even when I was a youngster, when you went to the movies, there was often live entertainment episodic type entertainment that would go on from week to week. It was a way of keeping it coming back, no matter what the feature film was. And some live entertainment would come on for 10 or 15 minutes, and then the feature would happen, or whatever you will. I think that was his original training ground. One thing led to another, and it wasn't long before he became a a more regular paying act uh, in vaudeville. Vaudeville was a type of theatrical entertainment in the United States and Canada from the early 1880s until the early 1930s. Each show was made up of separate, unrelated acts grouped together as one entire stage production. Types of acts included musicians, dancers, comedians, trained animals, magicians, impersonators, acrobats, songs, jugglers, scenes from plays, athletes, lecturing celebrities, movies, and ventriloquists. The stage entertainment, if you will, for the common ordinary people. And that's how many, many people, great Jewish comedians and others in the nation, that's how they all got their start and their break. Amid this wonderful experience, Edgar Bergen remembered his Decatur sweetheart. 
Between 1923 and 1924, Edgar corresponded with Linwood Bope through a series of 25 letters. Reportedly, Edgar Bergen was romantic, poetic, and gentlemanly, while vivid in his strong feelings for Linwood. Edgar was realistic. He understood that success meant hard work and confidence, plenty of it, and he made a life-changing choice. He quit school to join vaudeville. My understanding was that he, you know, I think found a way to make his own living, get on his own feet. Um, as to whether or not he felt college was as important for himself and his future as my grandfather thought, uh, obviously not. What, what was Dr. Pope's reaction to that year? He didn't like it at all. And uh, I infer that because uh, Edgar was uh, in rather hot pursuit of my mother as evidenced by 21 or so letters that still exist in the hands of a collector. And those letters were the quote unquote undying professions of a swain. And he definitely wanted her hand in marriage. And at that, this was at a point preceding, you know, his rocket-like rise to fame. And my grandparents uh, just wouldn't hear of that because it was notorious. You know, the ill-fated, hard luck stories of people who went into show business, vaudeville or whatever, and they weren't about ready to expose their, their uh, much-loved daughter to that risk. A small number of actors performed in grand theaters and made a good living, while most other actors, called second-rung vaudevillians, traveled throughout the countryside and performed their shows underneath canopies for much smaller audiences and even smaller pay. It, it just wasn't going to be, and uh, because of certainly parental influence or putting the foot down, and from that, you have to kind of, uh, as they say, infer what my grandparents thought about, you know, the risk he was taking in life, uh, electing the course that he traveled, as opposed to um, doing the more structured thing of going to college, graduating, and going on to some kind of a profession or, or a career that that would have provided the foundation for.
few years later, while attending the University of Michigan, Linwood Boat met a man named Bill Cudlip, and their lifelong marriage began. This loss may have affected Edgar to the extent that he felt like a widower. He didn't marry until 21 years later, in 1945, when he was 42 years old. 